good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. We're glad to see each one here. We want to try to be a blessing to you this day, and that's the reason why we ask the prayers for us. And uh, I know that, right, uh, Brother Larry said, well, go you. If you say Jesus wept, and it's in the will of the Lord, uh, there will be a blessing there. But anyway, we want, to, we want to study this morning something in the book of Matthew in chapter 26. And we want to start in, in verse 6 of chapter 26. We want to try to see some things here that uh, I've been trying to study on for, for a while. And so in verse, <clears throat> chapter 26, verse 6, Now when Jesus was in Bethany, Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box, a very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. <clears throat> As I was reading this, I noticed in Mark's uh, uh, writings, he says that uh, the woman poured it on her, on her, on his, uh, she washed his feet. Well, and that's probably what he saw, and probably what uh, Matthew saw was the same thing. But uh, a lot of times when they would come in from uh, a journey or somewhere like that, they would that would be the that was the. Uh, custom from the right. wash one another's feet and so this this lady this woman here that that was doing this uh pouring and washing uh, was uh mary and uh we see her as uh, uh one of the uh ones that was uh well i can't think what i'm saying I'm trying to say now anyway we'll we'll get to it in a minute <clears throat> but when his disciples saw it they had indignation saying to the what purpose is this waste and i was trying to tell you where i go mary and and, and uh and uh martha no, no but, well martha but and lazarus i'm trying to yeah lazarus they were all three here and i think if you if you do a little studying simon the leper was their daddy uh, according to what I can understand in my notes. But anyway, just something for, for, for thought. But anyway, back in our lesson now, I'll quit mumbling in a minute maybe. But when his disciples, notice he said disciples, plural, and saw it, they had indignation, saying, what purpose is this waste? <clears throat> and this is this is the place where that he says that, that he used his disciples instead of Judas. Now, I'm, I'm of the impression that Judas, just as soon as he heard this, he went around among his disciples and really started uh, saying, hey, this shouldn't be, this shouldn't be, this shouldn't be, and got them convinced. And listen, that sometimes is what all it takes is just a little word or two from us to another Christian, and it, it will kind of get them, get us all, all out of out of kelter. So mm -hmm. this morning, this is one of the th some of the things that we want to see uh, about uh, this man uh, that's Judas, and Judas was the one that was the devil from the beginning. That's, Amen. And so we we see his condition, and he he went along for the ride, people. And listen, right. he was. As we read this, we'll find out what his job was. And his job was to carry the purse and to carry all the money, and he done it like it was his money. Mm -hmm. uh, and because we'll see just in a minute why he asked this about why was this done, and uh, so he was greedy, and he he uh, he he showed his colors real quick there. Right. So. But here in verse 8, again, I'm going to read this. But when they, his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying to what purpose is, is this waste? And this morning, you can see their condition by what they called, what they said it was, because it was a waste. And they were disciples of Jesus Christ. Right. And listen, they knew when she was washing their feet or when they were uh, his feet or pouring the, the water uh, the oil on his head they knew what kind of a man he was and that he deserved it mm -hmm. but listen <clears throat> the devil got in there through judas iscara and listen he stirred up some people and listen this morning he's right here this morning with a desire to stir our Amen. hearts 
in the wrong way and to say, well, that old boy's up there stuttering around and can't do nothing. He, hey, you might as well be at home. Listen, that's his way of doing right. things and stirring things. So this morning you can get that out of the way and say, hey, we're here to serve the Lord, not to listen to the devil. Amen. And uh, we'll get him straightened out real quick. But anyway, in, in this here, he says, for this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Now, again, Jesus told them uh, later on, hey, you've got the poor always with you. Right. And that's 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 the thing this morning. That's the reason why that Jesus said all uh, in some of his epistles or in his words, blessed is the poor mm -hmm. and the meek at heart. So he said here in verse 10, when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. Amen. His foreknowledge of what was coming to pass, and he knew all about it. He knew that how he was going to be out in the garden of Gethsemane, how that he was going to be praying, if it be not thy will, and all these things. He knew all of these things were coming. And he knew what her purpose was here. And he and her were very good friends. All the family were good friends because he stayed there a lot of times. And he eat with them and, and visit with them. And he knew what her what her reason was for it and why that that he and he done it. So listen, he said here, <clears throat> for you have here it is, for you have the poor always with you, mm -hmm. but me you have not always. And we know this morning that that over in the book of Acts, you can read in the first or second chapter of therefore that Jesus ascended up, and as they looked, and he was caught away in a cloud. And I want to bring this to your attention this morning. Uh, what they said, these two angels that was there said, Why gaze ye up into the, into the sky? In like manner as you see him go up, he's going to come back. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, listen, we got, we've got got this blessed assurance this Amen. morning that Jesus Christ is going to come back for right. the saints. And listen, this morning we've got this blessed assurance that if we die, before he comes back, listen, we're going to come out of that ground, a glorified body, yeah. and we're going to, that cloud, this cloud he's coming back on now will be the souls of those that have went on, and he's, the, that body is going to unite with that soul, and it's going to go up to heaven and be with him there. And this morning, <clears throat> it's a wonderful thing this morning to have the, the trust in the Lord Jesus Christ that when I lay down and die, and when I remember back the calling that come from the Holy Spirit to me and, uh, and, and, and burden my soul, and I submitted to that, listen, what a wonderful thing it is that Satan cannot remove it. Yeah. Satan can't take anything from it and, and do away with it. And so I've got it. And listen, I, my desire is that I can tell others about it, that the Holy Spirit might deal with them, that they could be convicted of their sins and they could obtain salvation. Also. Amen. Amen. And so <clears throat> this morning, again, he said, uh, for in, in that she poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. So again, what I'm saying is he knew he knew what was it was all about. And you remember when they put him in the tomb, when they put him in the tomb, evidently they didn't have enough time to anoint his body and all this. And so this was a, a pre-thing for that which would take place. When, when Jesus died, they laid him in there and they had to do it in a hurry because it was it was getting out, uh, uh, close to the holiday that they wanted to, they couldn't leave him out. And so this was what, one of the reasons why he said, in, for in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Amen. Verily I say unto you, worth so ever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial for her. And that's, this this morning is, uh, I've always uh, read this scripture and I've searched the scriptures and all I thought there's somewhere or another that tells some more about this. But uh, here he says <clears throat> in verse 14, we'll get on with the, with the lesson. Then one of the twelve, in verse 14, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest 
and said unto them, What will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you? Mm. Now, I think back here in our lesson that we were just reading, or in the, the ones that we were reading, when Jesus told uh, the disciples and them, uh, you have me always with you, and she did it for my burial. And, uh, and don't, uh, you don't you don't say nothing about what she did this for because she did it because uh, she uh, she was uh, um, supposed to do it. But then notice here that in verse fifteen, and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they conveyed conveyed it with him for thirty pieces of silver. And so I think when Judas, when Judas really heard this, it just it just it broke the last string. He 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 said, hey, and he went, I'm sure he went out in a rage. And uh, and I know probably he was already thinking about this before that, but he went out in this rage and he went to these people and he said, Hey, how much money will you give me? And it was the old priest and them. They were, had been trying to kill Jesus. And uh, and he knew it. And so uh, he said, and they and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they conveyed with him for thirty pieces of silver. Now, <clears throat> over in uh, I think it's in Zechariah, or or maybe Exodus one or two. But this thirty pieces of silver, I looked it up and tried to study a little bit on it. This thirty pieces of silver was a was a price that they paid for a man that owned a bull or a, or a steer and he gored it another man he stuck his horn in him. and i don't know if, if he if uh, if it killed him i don't know if it was more or not but but this is what they said he that that 30 pieces of silver was all that they would pay for that man uh that that was gored with it and listen judas is Kara, put Jesus down just about as low as he could right. to get the 30 pieces of silver. And uh, and so he said here, and from that time, he sought opportunities to betray him. And so it, can you imagine, can you imagine Judas Iscara, uh in the last few days of his life, always looking and listening and, 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 and wanting, to, wanting to do this, wanting to do that to try to get Jesus killed. And Judas knew, Judas knew that Jesus had, was praying in Gethsemane. And he had went there time and time again. I'm sure Jesus went there and he had went with him and followed him. And so he knew eventually he would probably be there. Mm -hmm. but, and that's, this is what he had in, in, his, in his mind. So now the first day of the feast of the unleavened bread, his disciples came to Jesus saying unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat, uh, to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man and say to him, The master saith, My time is at hand, and I will keep the Passover at the house, thy house with thy disciples. Now, the, the, this, this feast of the Passover was the, the, was the real high day. Mm -hmm. John, I think it is 11, 11, calls it a high day. And it was an important day, and no, no man that was crucified could hang on the cross uh, during that time. And they didn't do, they didn't do any kind of stuff. And so, I, a while ago, when I mentioned this about them trying to get Jesus into the tomb, and uh, that they didn't have nothing to to put on him. <clears throat> but you know, after that, then they brought the the women brought this stuff to to the grave to to anoint him, put it on him. But so here we see here. That he said, and uh, in verse, and he said, I will keep the Passover at thy house with thy disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now, when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that that one of you shall betray me. Mm -hmm. So again. He knows all about this. He knows all about the oil that Mary used. He knows all of these things because before he came to this world, God and him, I'm sure, had already discussed all of this and, for, and, and, to, and God told him how it's going to be and everything. He knew it all. And so it was no surprise to him about this. And, and in, his, in verse 19, 
and hit, and the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Uh, now, let's see, I'm, 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 let me get on down here. Verse 22. And they were exceedingly sorry after he had said, One's going to betray me, and began every one of them to say unto the Lord, Is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall uh, betray me. And so he he pointed out a thing to them that they could tell who it was, but they never did see it. Mm -hmm. And the son, in verse 24, and the son of man goeth as is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had never been born. Mm -hmm. In other words, he, if he'd been, if he'd never been uh, in existence, he would have been a whole lot better off because he was headed for a, a devil's hell. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was the one that took the mark of betraying Christ and, uh, and and everything. So he said it, it'd be better if he never was he never was born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said. In other words, uh, Judas, you you said it. But the thing of it is, can you imagine the love of Jesus Christ? Now here he was at the table, and he asked him, Is it I? And Jesus merely said, hey, you said it. Mm -hmm. And so there wasn't no, no madness or anything there. But the thing of it is, in this, Judas, uh, or Jesus set the example that we should have this morning about our enemies and about those that mistreat us and those that want to harm us in any way. Listen, we should keep a cool and not not fly off the handle and let this old flesh get involved with this thing because uh, it's displeasing to the Lord mm -hmm. for us to do these things. And listen, it's hard on the body. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard on every, every part of your body and, it, and, and it's... It won't. It won't do any good, and it just leaves an opening for the devil to get in right. and to stir you more and to do more. Because listen, every time you practice something like that, the devil enjoys it, and he has a he has a feast over it. And so here, I'm sure he was having a feast, jumping up and down. But but I don't know. I don't know because I I, I wonder sometimes if he wished that he had never helped get him crucified. Because when he did, he he won the battle. Jesus won the battle. But anyway, here, in verse uh, 26, <clears throat> and as they were eating bread, and, uh, eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and break it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And they all, uh, and, and he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. And uh, we, we see this morning, that Judas is going to drink some of it. But Judas was still there. And that's the reason why he says drink ye all of it. He wanted every one of them to take a drink of this of this wine that was in the cup. And, and at that time when they had this meal, there was three cups. And uh, and two of them had already been emptied. And this was the wine, I think, that, uh, that was left over. And so he wanted him, Judas, to to drink some of that wine because it was a type of his blood and because Judas had betrayed him. And so this is why this morning you can see the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ in the way that he presented everything there. Hey, he had no hard feelings for Judas. Uh, he did, and, and, and uh, he, he, but he, he did want him to drink this. And so in verse 28, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many Amen. for the remission of sins. Now you know this is this is this is the blood. It's a type of the blood, and he had, he, he wanted Judas to, to drink some of it. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit, or not drink any more. Uh, and uh, I think you can see some of that in uh, Acts ten, I believe it is, and, and until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom so again jesus is saying here that i'm not going to partake of this anymore uh and the last thing that jesus i don't know how jesus 
I didn't, don't say anything about the other cups, but he said he wasn't going to partake of this one. And uh, uh, so if he didn't, why, well, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a good lesson in that if, if, uh, if the Lord would show it to me, and I, I'd, love, I'd like to know, know about it. But, and, and I know there's, I know it's there. So he, he says here, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drank it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a song, or sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Now, then in verse 31, then says Jesus unto them, all ye shall be offended all of you, this is all the disciples, because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. And that was the that was the disciples. They would be scattered. That was for, uh, foretelling some of the gospel and then uh, uh, in Zechariah, I believe it is. But he says, But after I am risen again. I will go before you into Galilee. Amen. And so they had they had a, a, a hope of seeing Peter uh, uh, Jesus again. And Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Yet, yet will I never be offended. And and this is this is something a lot of times that we we really try to do. And, and you know, it's the hardest thing in this world for us to keep this old flesh under control. And any time that, any time that something is said, uh, we, the flesh wants to rise up and, and fight this. And Peter said, Peter said, Jesus, I'll never be offended of you. Uh, and, 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 and I think he meant it. He meant it from the heart. But listen, <clears throat> and Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crows, thou shalt deny me thrice. Mm -hmm. And Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I ne not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. So they all agreed, and I'm, I'm sure that Judas was probably in there. I don't know if he'd left or not, but but anyway, they would all say, No, we won't, we won't be offended. And so then cometh Jesus with them unto the place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorry for even unto death, tarry ye here and watch with me. And so this Again, we, we've heard messages on uh, standing and for watching and things like this. Listen, he knew what was fixing to happen. Mm -hmm. And he asked them to just watch for him. And listen, this morning, that's something this morning that we need to understand what he's saying, watch. We need to be watching also because, mm -hmm. listen, we don't know what's fixing to happen. And we might, uh, uh, but we need to be ready in case... Uh, we can do something for somebody, we can be a witness for somebody, or whatever, but we need to be watching and, and taking notice of the things that are going on in this world. And so he said here uh, <clears throat> in verse 39, and he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Uh, the cup that he was talking about was for the sins of all mankind. And this is what this is what he cried when he cried on the cross. Thy Father, why has thou forsaken me? Because Jesus of God could not look upon Jesus. Because he he was covered with my sins and with your sins and all the sins of the world. And God cannot look upon sin. <laughs> and so Jesus said, Why have you forsaken me? And that is the reason why God loved Jesus, but the thing of it is he hates sin. And so he gave his son that the sin might be done away with in some of the people on this earth. And so the rest of them will be placed in a place called the lake of fire where that, that sin will never be 
where they can get out and lay there and all for it for eternity. But listen, that's the reason why this, this morning that that this cup was so important because that cup, that cup that that he's talking about there was full of all of the all of the sins, and he 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 said. Uh, uh, he was, it would be poured out on him, but he said, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. And so it was God's will uh, for him to drink that cup. And that was, that was the greatest love, the greatest love that you could ever think about. And Jesus coming to this world and dying for us uh, with the way he died, the punishment he took, and the weight that he had on him on the cross. No wonder that he died so quick. Uh, and uh, you know, they were amazed that he was already dead when they went to break his legs. And no wonder that he uh, died so quick. All of the sins of the world, the weight of sin, the sin of kill. And so this morning, this is something we need to think about. Uh, and, and I know, I know we do. So here again, and I'll be through in just a minute. And he cometh unto his disciples and finds them asleep and said unto Peter, What could ye not watch with me for an hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Amen. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. We pray a lot, Father, bless this and part bless that and, and be with them, be with them. But listen, he says here, he says, you watch and pray. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, uh, and so uh, then he said, he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Mm -hmm. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to the disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Mm -hmm. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be about going. Let us be going. Behold, he that he is at hand that doth betray me. And so uh, we see again here that. Uh, this was a, was Jesus' foreknowledge of this, and I want I would say one other thing, and then I'll I'll I'll, I'll close. But I want you to I want you to notice if I can find it here. Uh, but anyway, Judas told them the the army, the men that were the, well, the army didn't know who Jesus was, and there was a crowd there, and he <clears throat> told me said the first one I kiss, that's him, or the one I kiss, that's him, and listen. The kiss was a greeting. The kiss was a type of love. A kiss was a, a, a friendship thing. But it was for the deceiving of Jesus Christ's identity. And so when he done that, uh, they knew who Jesus was, and they <clears throat> they took him and made him to the, the priest. And uh, eventually, why well, he died on the cross of Calvary for me and you and for our sins. And listen, praise the Lord is not there. Praise the Lord is not in the grave. Praise the Lord is sitting on the right hand of the Father this morning. And listen, people, he's he's not sitting there twiddling his thumbs. He's making intercessions for you and for me. Amen. And God, God hears him because listen, he's got that blood. He's got that blood on him. And uh God can deny the blood. He ain't got that yeah. sin weight on him no more, but he's covered with blood. And, and Amen. His, his blood pacifies or satisfies God. And when he comes to him with a, with a prayer, he's, he presents the prayer. And from then, God takes him and he does with it what uh, he will. But that's his, that's his job right now. And one of these days before long, <laughs> he's going to get up. Mm -hmm. Because God's going to say, you go get my children. And listen, people, it can't be long. It just can't be long because everything's just getting in, getting in worse shape all the time. And so uh, he'll, he'll leave that place and he'll, he'll, he'll come back down on the cloud. He'll be there on, and he'll say, come on up here. 
And uh, we that are alive and remain will be caught up, but those that are dead in the grave are going to go first, and then we'll go out behind them, and, and that, that's the way we'll be forevermore in the, in the presence of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God. Amen. So that's our lesson for this morning, and I hope that you enjoyed the reading. Thank you so much for listening.